We're not going to go to our business and grind 17 hours a day, day in, day out, day in, day out, right, Jonathan? We're going to find a way to make every moment of our time as effective and efficient as possible, get the best impact, right? That's the goal. Sometimes we're going to jump in there. We're going to work that 18 hour day because that's what we got to get done. What we want to avoid is that that is the process. Your business should run by you and not through you. I want you to visualize this for a conveyor belt, right? Conveyor belt. That's your business, your world. Everything's on that business. Fences and contractors and material. And that belt, that belt's just running. You're standing there watching this belt go like this. This is what we want. You can occasionally grab something off that belt. You can look at it, you can inspect it, you can make a decision about it. You can put it back on that belt and it goes. What you want to avoid is standing like this and the conveyor belt coming right at you and everything comes through you. You're telling them, hey, do this, do that, do this, do this, do that, that one go. That's what most guys do running their business. They're, everything's going through them, right? Now, can you visualize everything going by you? We're going to get into, we're going to eat the frog this morning. But before we eat the frog this morning, because what I mean by that is we're going into budgets and cash flow. Don't say it like that. You're already signed up. <laughs> we're going to budgets and cash flow, boy. Yeah. This budget I call, or I even, I have used the word the Bible for us. I have used the phrase the Bible, this is our Bible, because it's so, it is the road map. It is literally the map everything in your business can come back to. I don't need you to be able to see what that number is, okay? Right now, I just want you to look at the whole overall sheet and I'll walk you through how the sheet figures numbers. There's no value in you seeing the actual dollar number right now. This budget looks like a p and For those of you guys that understand a p and this is really just a p and That's what this is. Profit and loss statement which means that we have at the top of the sheet, we have income. Where's our money coming from? All right. The next piece of that puzzle is cost of goods. What's the money that we're going to be spending right off the bat for those projects that are coming in? Income, cost of goods. What's left but after that cost of goods is the gross margin. All right, so the next part of the sheet, you go gross margin, now, what do we do with that gross margin? That's the money left over after I paid for the material and the labor. That's down below, we call that overhead. Overhead is everything from the shirts that I'm wearing to the phone that's in my pocket, to the insurance policy that protects me, to the lights back home, to the apps that I pay for, the subscriptions I pay for, the fees that you pay to be here today, the travel expenses to get here, the cost to be here, all of that is in overhead. So when I hear people tell me, well, I have no overhead, that's a huge problem. Once we get all the overhead accounted for, what's left over is net profit. After net profit, what's after that? Debt service, right? Debt service comes out of net profit. Debt service is not an expense. Another big mistake I made for a long time. I can't tell you how long, but the majority of my entire career in defense industry, I didn't understand debt service comes 100% out of net profit. I, would, I had it in a budget sheet for years in overhead as an expense because it's what? It's a payment. Oh, I got to pay for that truck $869 a month. So I put it as an expense because it's a payment. You can't expense that. You have to take that out of net profits. Income. Where's your income coming from? I don't want to see a bucket of uh, I'm going to do $1 million. Cool. How? I'm gonna do specifically, I'm gonna do vinyl fence, aluminum fence, wood fence, and chain link fence. I have colored chain link steel. I'm gonna do steel fence, and I, then that's all of my fencing. That's what Sean's gonna do, okay? And then I have decks, docks, pergolas, wood pergolas, and vinyl pergolas. I've split those out. So yes, income needs to be broke down by the divisions of where the income's coming from. Put it in groups. We want to group that. We want to get smarter about this. What, what Dan said was, it also allows me to look back. Imagine having income trends for previous years so you get really smart at what you want to grow your business to. Like if I look at it and like, well, I'll give you my example, gate operators. Gate operators, 0.8% of my total revenue was gate operators in 2020. 
But I did gate operators. You called me, I'd come give you that estimate. I'd send the team out to point eight. But realizing that we've got to get to a point where the business runs without me and we need to be running efficiently and not be going back and having Mrs. Jones call us at Saturday night at 10 p.m. because her gate won't close. So we made the decision in 2021, January, budget time, I said, told the whole group, we're done. Zero, I'm, tank, I'm trimming the fat. We're not gonna be a jack of all trades. We're no longer doing gate operators. Listen, you gotta make decisions in your business that are most effective for your business and your world and stop chasing those, those dollars that are not in your wheelhouse, all right? For some of you guys, you might have a gate operator division guy who's in a van and the only thing he does every day is gate operators. You might be doing $500,000 of gate operators. Well, cool, someone's gotta do it, fantastic. But I, in our company, looked around like him. Who was I competing against? Oh, it's MHS. Okay. What else does MHS do? Oh, they do a little bit of vinyl, a little bit of aluminum. Hmm. Let me call them up. Tell you what, I'll find you a solution. Called MHS and said, here's, I had a meeting, and said, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you $139,000 worth of gate operators. All right, that's what I did. I mean, I can show you. This is what I'm averaging. <laughs> You'll do all my gate operators for me. If I sell a big job, has a gate operator, and you come in, you're my gate operator, and you leave. I'm still telling the big job. He's not set up to do vinyl aluminum. Huh. Where's he getting the vinyl aluminum at? Hmm. I have it in stock. So now we're like, synergy. Now we're like, well, how about I buy some of my vinyl aluminum from you and shift you? How about you do the fence on my jobs? I just want to do the gate operators. Now I just took income that we sucked at, follow what I did, gate operators, and said we might have got a couple of vinyl jobs out of it. What are we good at? Vinyl fence. Railing. Railing, vinyl, and aluminum in 2021. It was 0.1% uh, of our revenue consistently. 0.1. But I'll take that railing job, right? We cut out railing. Listen, guys, if I did more of it, I can get better at it. I just don't. It's not my wheelhouse. Cut it out, less is more. The number one driving factor in your business, in my belief, the number one thing that drives everything else is your overhead cost. Build your machine from the overhead first. If your overhead cost was 50% of your total revenue, <coughs> and I add a uh, uh, expense and overhead for $24,000, how much more revenue do I have to do to be even Steven? 48. Yes. It's just that simple. Now, I used a really rough number of 50% overhead because we do the math to be easy. Just double it, okay? But if you put something in, I, I really want to make sure if we go much further, you put something in expense into overhead, it drives your revenue cost, your goals up. That's income. Cost of goods is a lot simpler. Cost of goods is material labor. So Sean King believes, and there's a lot of different ways to do this. I promise you there is. I would like to simplify cost of goods as small as possible, all right? There is definitely value in, 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 in having a conversation about, well, I can put trucks in cost of goods, I can put fuel in cost of goods, I could do, I could do, I could do, I could do, I could do. I'm like, yeah. But if you break it down to the basics, what you cannot do is remove material and labor. So what's labor, guys? So direct labor is I'm here to build Mrs. Jones' fence, my feet touch her property. That's direct labor. If salesperson's overhead, Salesperson's overhead. Your shop guy's overhead. Why is your shop guy overhead? Did his boots hit the ground at the job site? I'm telling you, it's really simple. Job supplies are a direct cost, but they're very difficult to cost to each individual job. What do I mean by that? The hinges you used on Mrs. Jones' fence, the latch you used, the nails you put in her fence, the screws you put in her fence, the caps, the glue, all of that was left at her property. So it's a direct cost of goods. And if you're really good with bookkeeping, you'll have inventory hinges and latches and nails, which we did at one time. We had all that. We literally would count how many nails this job should have taken and take them out of inventory and cost it to the job. It's a lot, right? So years ago, I'm like, I know it needs to be costed. I, this is crazy. I don't want to bury my overhead. How do I do this? So I looked at historical data year after year after year after year because I had this category called job supplies. 
And what I found was it is absolutely between 3 and 3.5% of my total revenue, whether I was a million or whether I was 5 million. It was still in there, like the same number, whether I did more vinyl or less vinyl, more chain link or less chain link. Every fence you build has got those incidentals in there. So what we did is we job cost every single job gets 3.5% costed as job supplies. I don't care if that job really used 3.5, it might have been 2.1, and that one might have been 5.7. Averages, don't lie. 2017, 18, 19, and 20 data. That's P&Ls. Why is that there? So that when I'm looking at my pink column, see this column right here? This is what I get to input. That's my input. I get to put whatever I want in that column. So somebody was asking about printer paper. Here we go, look. Equipment repairs. Right here, equipment repairs. A 2002 Dovetail homemade trailer, 04. I spent in 18, 1500 bucks. In 19, 200 bucks. In 2020, I spent 1100 bucks. In 2021, I said, you know what? I'm probably gonna spend 1500 bucks on tires and fixing that vehicle. If you spend money on it, every dollar you spend is be dissected in here. I want you to look at everyone and say, how is that truck doing? Well, it's about three years old. That drill's probably three years old. All right, boom, boom, boom. You have to think about that and make a decision. You cannot just use a random percentage, you, I guess you could, but things change. Are you going to upgrade that truck? Are you gonna move it to a different division? Is it, what's the performance of it, right? How rough is it? Listen to what he's saying. Should I lease a new truck? 2017 F550 is costing me six grand in fuel. My F650 is costing me two grand in fuel. Different truck, newer truck. Uh, how, I w how would I, if I didn't have that data, <laughs> I wouldn't know that. The budget sheet, the, the, the sum of it, guys, is this. We gotta sit down. You need to look at where your income's coming from. You need to look at what your cost of goods is. I need some averages, percentages. You need to look at all your overhead pieces, write them down. Okay, everything, every, every bill you can imagine that you pay, write it down. And then we can put it in the budget sheet. We can get you started on a budget.